He acquires most who requires nothing but commands respect. Erasmus, the education of a Christian prince. Hello and welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. At this point, Don Quixote is horrified. Oh, sinner that I am, and how poorly it reflects on governors that they should not know how to read or write. The discussion returns to the topic of Sancho's tendency to abuse refrains, but notice how political philosophy lingers here. Sancho's refrains endorse the Machiavellian idea that might makes right. He repeatedly says it makes no difference whether he can read or write because he will have power. Having the scepter and the command, I'll do whatever I wish. The stupidities of the rich man are esteemed truisms in the world. And you're only worth the amount that you have, my grandmother used to say. Similarly, Don Quixote insists that the squire's reliance on refrains will bring about a popular revolution. These proverbs are going to get you hanged. They will either cause your vassals to remove you from power or else bring about a revolt of the townships. This last refers to the Comuneros revolt of 1520 to 1521 at the beginning of the reign of Spain's first Habsburg king, Charles V. We can even read a veiled reference to the issue of private property when Sancho insists that refrains are all he has in the world. What the devil does it matter to you if I make use of my riches when I have no other, nor any other wealth, just proverbs and more proverbs? Cervantes' irony continues when Sancho claims that four refrains have just occurred to him and then lists six. Some of these seem hilarious and off point, such as, there's no real way to respond to get out of my house and what do you want with my wife? Others are contradictory, such as the allusion to Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, he who sees the speck in another's eye should see the beam in his own, which emphasizes humility. And a fool knows more in his own house than a wise man does in that of another, which endorses Sancho's ignorant use of political power. Did you know some historians of the Comuneros Revolt, 1520 to 1522, consider it to be the first modern revolution? Don Quixote is again horrified. No proper building is erected on a foundation of foolishness. He's also mortified. If you govern poorly, yours will be the blame and mine the shame. And sees no good outcome to Sancho's governorship. You are going to turn that aisle upside down. In the end, however, Sancho recovers Don Quixote's respect by returning to the themes of humanist equality and Christian humility. When sleeping, we are all equal, the nobles and the underlings, the poor and the rich. And I would rather go to heaven as Sancho than to hell as a governor. Don Quixote is now overjoyed. If only for these last words of wisdom that you have spoken, I judge you worthy of the governorships of a thousand isles. Quixotic mission. According to Don Quixote, if Sancho does not govern well, to whom will fall the shame? A. Teresa. B. Don Quixote. C. Tomé Cecial. Correct answer. B. Don Quixote. A final point here. Given the fact that Thomas Hobbes was one of the first serious readers of Cervantes' novel, it is likely that one of the most striking metaphors in the Englishman's political and materialistic critique of metaphysical thinking was inspired by this passage. Hobbes mocked superstitious belief in spirits by noting that clerics cannot explain how a man's soul can be entirely contained by his little finger and yet not occur in greater abundance in the rest of his body. Sancho's concern for his soul suggests this problem. I care more about the darkened sliver of the fingernail of my soul than I do about my entire body. Thank you for joining me in this chapter. Hope you can join me in the next one too. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.